Hi there. The following video is not meant so much to be a recipe that you follow precisely as it is a demonstration of how to keep things loose, fun, and flexible in the kitchen. I hope you enjoy. As you can see, I changed out of my cat suit and put on my baby, Walter. He's sleeping, maybe waking up, maybe sleeping, maybe a little waking up, maybe back and forth. We'll see. But we're going to do our best to continue working on our pumpkin soup. Last we checked in, our pumpkins had roasted beautifully um, at 400 degrees Fahrenheit in our oven for a long, long time. I think they probably roasted for oh, at least an hour and a half. Um, they ended up with a beautiful kind of caramelized golden brown skin or casing going around all the pumpkin flesh. And then we trimmed off the... Um, the skins or the rind of the pumpkin so that everything that's left in the pot is ready to get pureed. That's the next thing that we're going to work on. We're going to puree our pumpkin so that it gets kind of turned into like pumpkin mashed potatoes. Picture that, okay? So it's going to be like not quite as liquidy as a soup, but like a creamy, thick pumpkin mud. It's going to be amazing. This beautiful pumpkin mud could be used to make anything from pumpkin pie um, to a pumpkin curry or a pumpkin soup like we're going to do. I think actually I'm going to work on two different kinds of pumpkin soup. One that's a little more sort of European than its origin, I suppose. And for the other batch, I was thinking that we could add some coconut cream, some lime juice, and some cilantro make sort of a like a Thai pumpkin soup is the idea there. Um, we'll see if I can come up with some other good Thai ingredients that might go into that. Maybe a teeny tiny bit of fish sauce could work. I can see that. Maybe, maybe not. I'll have to think about it. Sometimes when I'm cooking, I know exactly what I'm doing from the very beginning. And the other times, I like to keep it really loose so that I can kind of smell what's going on in the pot and taste what's going on and think about, like, how I could make it even better. And I think that's probably how I'm going to go about my two batches of pumpkin soup. So, without further ado, let's dive into it. I have here my big pasta pot a whole lot of roasted pumpkin that's been hanging out in the fridge overnight. As you can see, there's a little bit of moisture in the bottom of the pot. That's actually perfectly okay with me. That's just really flavorful pumpkin broth that will help make our soup liquidy. I'm also going to add a little bit of stock. I have a turkey stock that I've been excited to use for a long time. And I just defrosted it from the freezer. And this is a really, really rich, flavorful bone broth that's going to make this pumpkin soup really excellent. Glug, glug, glug. Pour, pour, pour. Tap, 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 tap. Scrape, scrape, scrape. And I don't know about you, but the combination of that essence of turkey from the stock with that sweet pumpkin really makes me think of Thanksgiving and my favorite thing is that, that I love about fall this time of year. All right, enough of the spatula action. I'm going to switch off for something with a little more muscle to it so that we can really break down this pumpkin and make some headway. Let's see. This tool would work if you have, if you yourself are pretty young, like if you're under the age of like, eight years old or so, um, this is probably the best tool for you to use to break down this pumpkin mesh. And if I were really, really patient, I could keep going like this, and that would work out just fine. As long as I don't spill it all over the counter, huh? Oh, it looks like Walter's starting to wake up. Hi, buddy. How you doing? He was about to cry. He really likes it when I pat his bottom. So I'm going to do that. And we'll see if he can be a little bit 
patient and hang with me a little longer so that his mama can take a little bit more time to herself. We all need time for ourselves sometimes. Even moms need time to themselves sometimes. I'm going to go ahead and start reheating this mixture. Hi, buddy. I'm going to hand it off Walter to his mama so that she can help him out with some dinner. And then I'm going to keep working on our dinner. Give me just one second. I'll be right back. All right. Walter is all taken care of. And I'm back. Our pot is warming up slowly over the stove. Remember, so far this just has the roasted uh, pumpkin and some turkey stock. Again, you could use vegetable stock. I suppose you could even use like a seafood stock. Maybe like a shrimp stock would, could be really good with the pumpkin. I could see that. So I'm using my immersion blender now to just turn everything into a beautiful mush. To make it really homogenous. That's a great word. Homogenous. Homogenous means that everything is completely even and uniform and the same all the way throughout. So it doesn't have any tiny bits and pieces that stand out. All just one even puree, a homogenous liquid. That's what we're going for. Well, obviously, I'm being super, super careful about never, ever putting my hands anywhere near that spinning blade, right? This tool has to be taken very, very seriously because it's really quite powerful. And I just want to make pumpkin soup. I'm not trying to send myself to the emergency room today. So I'm going to keep my fingers far away from that spinning blade. So as you can see, it's pretty liquid. But I'm going to just keep plugging away and chugging away with this blender because I want it to get really, really, really liquid. I want everything to get broken down. So we have a beautiful puree. This is our base, pretty much all done and ready. I'm just gonna go ahead and taste it so that I can start thinking about how I wanna salt it. Oh, so good. It's got a little bit of smokiness from being roasted, really rich flavor, lots of sweetness from the, from the pumpkin itself, and from the turkey stock. Mm. That's totally delicious. You could eat that just as is. But I think to make it even tastier, I'm going to start by adding quite a good pinch of salt. This is some kosher salt. When I say a pinch, I'm thinking like probably, I don't know, at least a, a teaspoon, maybe two teaspoons even. We'll start with that. Go ahead and taste again to see how we're doing with the salt. Mmm. So much better already. I think it could still use a bit more. So I'm going to give another couple pinches. Another, say, half a teaspoon, teaspoon, something like that. And I'm going to want black pepper in both versions of my pumpkin soup as well. They're definitely going to have a lot of similarities. But I think after the pepper's done, this is where they're going to start to diverge. So I'm going to take out another soup pot, and we're going to start working on two batches of soup at the same time. This way I'll have lots and lots of soup, and it'll make a great freezer meal. Just this week, I've turned on the lights in what will be my winter garden. This is my off-season gardening project to keep my hands busy and to keep you know trying and learning new things all about gardening so i'm really determined to have lots of herbs and spices with me all year round and uh, to not need to go to the grocery store to get things like sage which i'm harvesting now for my pumpkin soup 
I'm going to fry up these sage leaves in some butter, and brown the butter, and make a delicious sage and thyme butter to add to my soup. It's going to make it really herbaceous. That means it tastes of herbs, like sage and thyme. And it's going to give it this beautiful, like, umami from the butter. Umami is sort of like savoriness, like the thing that makes it taste like supper, like dinner. That should do. Okay. So I have a bunch of thyme and a bunch of sage. And that's going to go in my sort of more European-style pumpkin soup. Now, I have some cilantro growing here inside, but I don't have that much of it. So I'm just going to snip a little bit, and then I'm going to see if I can find a little bit more growing outside. All right, let's run through what we're going to do for our two different batches. All right? On my left here, we have the ingredients for our more Western style pumpkin soup, okay, or European style pumpkin soup. And we're gonna keep it pretty straightforward. We're going to add the thyme and sage that we picked to this butter, and we're going to brown the butter and flavor it with these delicious green herbs fresh from the indoor garden. And then we're going to add our pumpkin puree mixture to that brown herbaceous butter with some of these red pepper flakes, spicy red pepper flakes. And then we're going to just throw in a delicious Parmesan rind, which is going to add a beautiful salty nuttiness to our pumpkin soup. That's the final ingredient. And then, you know, people can salt and add black pepper to their taste so that it tastes just the way they want it. But that's the basic idea for the Western style pumpkin soup. Now, the Eastern style pumpkin soup is going to feature coconut milk, some yellow turmeric, ground cumin. Oh, I made one mistake here. We're gonna do a little bit of garlic in with that brown butter too. That was in the wrong pile. So some garlic is gonna go in with the Western style soup. All right, back to the East. Whew. All right, so coconut, turmeric, ground cumin, ginger. This is some beautiful sprouting ginger root. I'm just gonna cut off a little piece of this one and then I'm actually gonna plant the rest of it to grow more ginger. And this is the ginger that we typically see fresh in the store. Uh, they're the same plant, but one of them is much younger. This is young ginger. And this is older ginger that's had a chance to develop a thicker skin. They're both delicious. Then we're going to garnish that with some fresh cilantro. And these are the pumpkin seeds that I roasted before. And we could add those to either soup, really, at the end. All right. I'm going to get to it by starting by browning the butter for the Western style soup. So I better chop up some garlic and get everything heated up. Yeah. See how the butter is turned kind of like a golden brown? That's gonna be just delicious. And these crispy sage leaves, mm, they smell fantastic and they're gonna add such a fun, brittle, delicate texture put them over the soup at the very end. All right, so I'm going to take all these goodies and actually set them aside. Stir, 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 stir. Scoop, 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 scoop. There. And this is going to be the toppings for our soup. The garnish, if you will. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce my cheese rind. 
doesn't look like much, but that Parmesan rind is absolutely chock full of flavor. It is like incredibly delicious. I never throw out my cheese rinds from hard cheeses like Parmesan. You want to save those and use them. You can eat, you can basically make a soup stock just out of the rind of a cheese. Salty and delicious. Yeah. So, without further ado, let's add some of this puree, shall we? Just gonna stir it up really, really well. Trying to divide these as evenly as possible so I get two good batches of soup. I'd say that's pretty close. I am going to thin both of these out with a little bit of water and some coconut milk is going to go in the Southeast Asian style one. I'm going to add some water to my European style one now. Give that a stir. See where we're at. Yeah, that's looking good. Some people like their pumpkin soup a little thicker. Some people like it a little thinner. There's no one right way to do it. You can always make it thinner by adding more water. You can always make it thicker by leaving it over the heat to reduce a bit so that the moisture evaporates off. I forgot to add the crushed red pepper. Eh, it's not too late. It would have been maybe a little bit better to do it earlier in the butter while it was browning. But it will still be good now. Mmm, that is so good. Now, the red pepper flakes you should really do to taste. If people like things spicy, you can add a whole lot of these red pepper flakes. If people don't like things too spicy, you can add a lot less. So you could add as much as, say teaspoon to this amount of soup would probably be pretty good. That's that. Our western style pumpkin soup is ready to serve up. I garnish with some crispy sage leaves and pumpkin seeds and it's ready to go. On to the second batch, the Thai style batch. Now I need to prep my ginger for my Southeast Asian style coconut pumpkin soup. So, like, as I said, I'm going to save some of this root to plant. So I'm just going to cut off a little section of this young ginger, and then I'm going to use this other hunk of older ginger. I'm going to go ahead and take off, quickly take off a bunch of the skin. I'm not worried about getting every last little bit of brown skin, but it does affect the flavor and I don't want too much of it. So I'm going to take a quick moment, just kind of trim it down and reveal that beautiful, juicy ginger hiding underneath. When I'm cutting ginger, I want to make sure that I'm curling my fingertips away from the knife blade. And that's how I keep my body safe and keep a good grip on the vegetables that I'm cutting. I've also got to shake up my coconut milk really well. Shake, 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 shake. I like to use coconut milk that does not have guar gum, but unfortunately this one does have guar gum. I find that it changes the texture of it in a way that I'm not, I don't really like. I don't think that coconut milk needs anything added to it to be at its very best, but so be it. Here's my beautiful, rich coconut milk. I'm going to add this whole thing to my soup, along with the ginger, turmeric, and cumin. Then we're going to hand blend that up again and garnish that with a little bit of cilantro. All right, let's do it. So, here's our can of coconut milk. There it goes. The thick part is the coconut cream, and then there's the coconut water that separates out from that, which is the thinner, liquidier 
clear material coming out of the can. Next, some turmeric. I'm going to do it to taste, starting with, oh, maybe about a teaspoon again. I'm going to add less cumin, not nearly as much. I can always add more, but once you add it, you can't take it back out. So I'll add that to, as a starting point. Now I'm going to add my ginger. I'll blend the whole thing up. Taste it and see if I want to add anything more. That should do it. Oh no! And I discovered that I'm out of limes, which is a huge problem for this soup. This coconut pumpkin soup definitely, definitely must have lime in it. So. I'm going to start giving it a little citrusiness and a little bit of heat from this spiced yuzu. Yuzu is in the lemon and citrus family, but it's a little bit different than a lemon or a lime. It's used a lot in Japanese cuisine, and I think it's delicious. This particular yuzu happens to be spicy, so I'm using it to add a little bit of heat to my soup as well. I'm going to stir that up and give it another taste. It's going to be so much better with the real lime juice added to it, too, though. So that's, well, that's to look forward to, I guess. My quasi-Thai-style pumpkin coconut soup is all ready to serve up. With all that delicious ginger and the yuzu that we added late in the game. Garnish with a few pumpkin seeds, just like before. And a little bit of cilantro as well. Beautiful. That's going to be absolutely delicious. As you can see, making pumpkin soup is not rocket science. It just takes a little bit of time and imagination. Do you think you'd like to try my Western style soup? How about the Thai style coconut pumpkin soup? Can you think of any other ingredients that I didn't use that you could use to make your very own pumpkin soup? Good luck with it. Happy cooking.